Hello everyone, welcome to MRU e-learning, powered by Malaredi University. Myself, Dr. Shanmukhi, Assistant Professor, Department of Horticulture, School of Agriculture Sciences, Malaredi University. So today's farming, today's topic is on urban farming. So which is a revolutionizing agriculture for sustainable cities. So before going to a topic, let us know what makes us to bring a urban farming. So as we are aware of that, the global population by 2050 is going to be increased like 68%. That means many one from villages they are transferring to a cities. There the increasing the population so that we have to feed like 9.7 billion people world by by 2050. So, but there is a problem like uh, 30 percentage of food loss. It may be a due to transportation or it may be a due to a, a storage. So, this makes us a rapid urbanization demand for innovative solutions and for sustainable and food security has to be increased. So, let us know actually what do you mean by urban farming. As we are aware of the traditional farming where we are growing a food in the field. Now, we are shifting from food from fields to a food from the terrace. There, we are cultivating the crops or any livestock in urban so, cities. Uh, we can use any space of urban cities. It may be a rooftop, it may be a balcony, it may be any gardens, community gardens, any vacant space present in a particular society. So, we can grow vegetables, any herbs or fruits or any limited spaces for that community purpose. So, you can see here different types of urban farmings. We are having a roof garden, community garden, vertical farming, hydrophonics and the last uh, aquaphonics. And when it comes to a hydrophonic system, why a people are choosing a hydrophonics among all urban systems? We are having a water efficiency. That means we are going to save 90% of water with recirculating the nutrients. And the growth rate, that means the speed of a plant is increasing from 20 to 55 percent faster compared to other types of urban farmings. And the yield is 11 percent higher than other precise because this is due to precision control we are taking in that particular hydrophonic systems. And there is a one more thing like advanced technology integration. That means we are here, what we are doing here, we are increasing uh, increasing the yield by using a di different technology. So that means we are radiating the energy like a 75% reduction. In this particular thing, climate control, so the temperature is going to be maintained like a 18 to 24 degrees centigrade and humidity can be like a 60 to 70 as CO2 levels which are required for that particular crop can be maintained. And the here, what are the things we are going to check? We are going to think plant health, nutrient levels and environmental conditions without any human touch using our sensors. And even you can go with the, know the growing conditions and harvesting time for getting a maximum yields. There is a automated systems where you can give a smart irrigation using a drip irrigation, nutrient delivery and climate control to reduce the labor and at the same time human errors can also be controlled here. So you can see here during 2020 the rate of that max market opportunities and growth is a lower and now in 2025 it is increasing. They may increase up to a huge difference by 2030 and we are having here we are having a different models, even revenue streams, what we have to keep in mind if we want to give a urban farming in the cities. Make sure that there should be a commercial production. Select those crops which are having a commercially valued and educate and consulting. We have to create or you have to create a training programs, workshops and you can also consult as urban farming initiatives. And one more thing. Consider farm as a service. You have to give a farming solutions and a business ideas for the institutions also. And technological license. Before going to this kind of thing, we have to get a license from our communities. 
we are also having a different global success stories that is singapore sky greens you are having a netherland growwise and usa aero farms the main motto of all these countries is to utilize the waste space that means a uh, terrace make we can say as a terrace where the empty space is pleasant present and that can be used for growing farm farms so the main motto is only to increase the food production for particular area where we are raising and the particularly netherland it increased the yield by 25% and it also helped to great a climate optimization even uh, usa aero farms they are using no pesticides at the same time 95% less water they are utilizing and our what is our role particularly to use a urban farming revolutionaries so we have to go with the conference organization making sure that share the knowledge share showcasing your innovative ideas in urban agriculture and you have to go with the share research best practices real world applications to inspire the farmers and next one collaborate with the researchers entrepreneurs and the policy makers this is the main thing we have to keep in mind why because if we are not going to produce or if we are not going to supply any type of policy to the farmer he or she are not willing to uh, bring a urbanization in farming next thing a future production it is a thing we have to keep in mind see for future food systems and any technologies we have to go with the sustainable agriculture here you can see all the terrace you can see this is a building all the terrace area is especially utilized with growing of leafy vegetables and even that particular leafy vegetables are going to act as a fresh they can be served to the local communities and what are the benefits we are going to hear we can get food security benefits like local production so that that means we don't want to depend on a other resources as the resources are available locally and year round availability for example consider you are having a terrace you are growing a certain crops on your terrace so year round you can go that particular uh, vegetables which choice of your interest throughout the period and supply continuous supply at the same time nutritional quality as we are growing our vegetables in our terrace you know what kind of pesticides or what kind of chemicals you are spraying of course if you are not going with any chemicals that is very well and good you are going to get a nutritional quality one at the same time pest and residues free so what are the environment benefits we are going to get as i mentioned it is nearly saving 90 to 75% sorry 90 to 95% less water we are utilizing and we can also reduce a chemical usage and we can also cut emission up to 95% and the usage of land 90% 95% less land we can utilize and resource uh, efficiency what we are doing we are increasing the resource and we are producing the uh, product with the less resources and we can also save in 70 percentage of less energy compared to a conventional one so as we are recycling the water or we recycling the things we can also reduce the water usage and one more thing 365 days growing season can be seen on the roof garden one more and when it comes to economical opportunities we are creating a job we are create, creating the local growth as the locals are going to sell the produce and next reduce import that means what are the import we are tra- i mean if we are bringing something from other states or other part of our state they will also charge a transportation cost which can be reduced by using a urban farming and a premium market as a product is grown on our terrace so the quality of the produce is not going to be reduced that can be act as a premium quality produce health benefits no harmful chemicals and harvested at peak ripeness and a minimized food borne illness that what we are discussing and produce in urban food deserts of course plant filter air pollutes of course and next and green spaces boost Uh, mental health this is the main thing we have to concentrate nowadays being an urbanization uh, what are the things we are losing is a greenery when we are losing a greenery automatically there are lot of chemical imbalance that is going in our body 
to bring that chemical in, the imbalance to a balance, we have to go certain activity which can we are using here as urban farming. When we are growing up plants on our terrace automatically, so we will have certain physical activity on the terrace automatically our health is going to be increased. So if we have to, what are the things of climate resilience we are going to weather independence? Of course, we are growing inside the I mean, particular area. So we are not going to depend upon weather. If any extreme weather conditions are also there, we can also protect from them. And drought resistance. So there won't be any water short shortage. No issue. And temperature control. Maintenance of optimal growing. As previously we discussed, we are maintaining certain temperatures. That may be 18 to 21 degrees centigrade. Every temperature is maintained. And when it comes to our disadvantages, the main thing is it is a capital investment is very high. So we have to uh, invest a lot during initial days. And uh, for equipments, uh, LEDs and infrastructure and ten technology integrations. And we also require a skilled labor. And first and foremost aspect, financial challenging may be occur during initial stages of growing an urban farming. And what are the things we have to make a challenge during our initial stages. See, high electricity, climate control needs, it required a ventilation, uh, automatic active cooling systems, uh, and uh, at the same time, heating systems for that consumption of energy will be more. And also we are having a, we are going to risk a carbon footprint and high optimizing a cost. We are also operating high costs are required that may be nearly 25 to 30 percent. Another complexity is challenges we have to keep in mind. For operating this kind of system, we have to keep a 15 to or nearly 20 systems for coordination and a continuous operation like 24 hours, 24 by 7, we have to keep in mind. And the failure chances in the first year may be like a 10 to 15 percent. So for each and every operation, we require a technically skilled labor to continue our operations. And crop limitations. So for everything, there will be some benefits and of course, there will be some bottlenecks which we'll call them as the limitations. Limited to crop variety. So as we are growing on a terrace or any areas or near urban cities, we can't grow all kind of vegetables there. We have to select those vegetables which are giving early yields to meet our urban population. So we are limited to certain crops only like greens, herbs and small fruits. Difficult for root crops and trees. Of course, uh, the trees we can't grow them on the terraces. Inish inefficient for the grains and a sufficient growth requirement, specific sufficient growth requirements has to be maintained. The, all these are going to be a uh, limitations for our urban farming and what are the regulatory challenges we have to keep in mind zoning restrictions so we are restricted to certain areas only and building codes so what we are existing there are certain structures of buildings where we can't meet with agriculture use equipments or requirements and food safety complex and water usage there will be some areas where the restricted to consumption and waste water discharge will be a low so during that cases we can't use that waste water so uh, for our thing we are going to say uh, Singapore's urban leadership it is increasing a day by day we are aware of that these are the Singapore buildings I took picture for that and uh, increasing the urban population day by day at the same time increasing the urban farming day by day and uh, there is a government investment government is giving an investment for that particular innovative ideas so that they are going to reach high in the market and there is a Brooklyn Grand success story. The story is to utilize the land properly. In the absence of land, they are utilizing any space of the building which is remained vacant. It may be a terrace, it may be a balcony, whatever the space may be. The main motto is to increase that farm income and also to produce more organic vegetables per year and also to create awareness among the students and even between the communities. And last, it reduces the storm water and it want to create more awareness among the people to grow with an organically produced vegetables. And how the AI and machine learning helps to create a urban farming more previous. So here, timely harvesting and yield forecasting can be deteriorated and it helps to monitoring and disease detection can be done 
and also helps to optimize temperature, humidity and CO2. And even it helps to deliver plant-based need nutrients to the particular farm. So here uh, advanced robotics, what we are saying, precision planting, what we are saying, the spacing between plant to plant, row to row is fully uh, managed by the robots here. And uh, everything drone mechanization we can also. Using these robots, we can also reduce 80% of labor and we can harvest accuracy. It is up to 95% and operating capacity 24 hours, 24 hours, 7 days in a week. We can go with without any delay. And uh, fast processing, fast processing, nearly 50% more processing we can do. And economic viability and investment outlook, what we are doing here. Market growth is increasing day by day. Investment trend is increasing. Cost reduction, so it is nearly 15 to 20% annually, it is uh, decreasing. So profitability is reduced or a particular period like a 3 to 5 years initially as the investment is high. Once it crosses 3 to 5 years, automatically the investment is going to be fetch good prices. So another things we have to keep in mind, it is uh, like a policy recommendations and government support, how it is going to, it has to create zoning reforms. Instead of keeping per particular zone, it has to go with the different zones. And next, tax incentive, we should cut tax on that and streamline permitting, it should fast approving of urban project has to be research and funding. Uh, proper research has to be takes place and the government also should provide a proper funding to start this kind of incentives. What are the things, key things and actions we have to keep in mind before starting an urban farming? Transformative potential. That means urban farming revolutionize food production, enhancing food security, sustainability and economic growth we have to keep in mind. Take dry solutions. We are using AIs, robotics and uh, any other tools for getting a viable and more accuracy levels so that we are going to get profitability. And balanced perspective, challenges including high cost, energy consumption and regulatory barriers has to be keep in mind. And when it we are having a lot of case studies, so for demonstrating viability and what are the models of urban farming at present. So out of this, I want to declare that if we are having uh, any areas in our cities, it may be uh, any barrier land also. Simply we can go with the construction of a building where the land is not utilized for any type of agriculture conditions. During that time, in a particular building also, we can uh, set up a hydrophonic systems which is light in weight, which requires uh, less water, which uh, it can be automized. So bringing a Traditional farming into a urban farming creates a lot of employment opportunities in the cities also. Thank you.